and this is Trevor from Astro Backyard. Tonight I'm going to be stacking some hydrogen alpha frames uh, captured with my Canon XSI modified DSLR uh, and that's with the astronomic 12 nanometer HA filter. Uh, so that uh, allows you to capture much longer exposures um, and it picks up uh, nebulosity uh, in a way that RGB imaging can't. So um, also just to mention the modification I have on my Rebel XSI camera is known as the naked sensor modification. It, um, it's basically I just remove the IR cut filter uh, with an X-Acto knife very carefully uh, so it allows a lot more of the reds from deep sky objects such as uh, emission nebula uh, to be recorded under the camera sensor which would normally be blocked by that IR cut filter. So um, we'll get right to it. So I'm in Deep Sky Stacker here and I just wanted to go over how to stack HA frames using Deep Sky Stacker. So we're going to open our picture files. Uh, these have all been pre-organized in Adobe Bridge beforehand, uh, just to make it easier for myself. So this is on September 19th. I took these. Let's see how many we have here. 31 light, 5 minute light frames. And I also took darks. So you want to um, capture dark frames uh, just like you would with uh, a regular RGB image. Uh, and I don't believe you need to take flats or bias frames when stacking HA um, because a lot of the issues uh, like um, vignetting from noise or from light pollution don't exist with the HA filter. That's that's the other great thing about an HA filter. It almost completely cuts through moon glow and light pollution which is it means I'm going to be imaging a lot more so there's group one or the, sorry the main group uh, 31 light frames 15 darks and then we're going to put night two in here and these are more five minute frames so we got now we're at 62 in total, and we'll put the darks in. So the same temperature. Look at that, 30 degrees. That's it was a it was a warm night, probably too warm to be taking these uh, frames. I just couldn't help it though; it was clear. Check all. Okay, and I just wanted to go over something here in the settings, in the stacking settings. I've tried to enable the two times drizzle because apparently that, that creates a higher quality image but my like this is a really really fast high powered laptop and it crashes every time it doesn't crash it says it runs out of memory so same thing and I've tried that on uh, standard mode and intersection mode which is supposed to cut down a little bit on uh, memory use but like I said every time it failed so uh, we're going to leave it as is. It's pretty well the, deep, the uh, default settings on Deep Sky Stacker. Uh, and then, all, speaking of default, I, I believe it defaults at uh, 75 or 80% of uh, select the best percentage of pictures and stack them. But uh, I like to bump that up to 90% because I've already went through these frames in, in Adobe Bridge and pre-approved them and deleted the bad ones. Um, luckily, most were more good than bad. And I'm going to go ahead and stack these together. And then uh, once that's done, I'll, I'll be right back. The final stacked image looks like. And uh, for those new to Deep Sky Stacker, you might be like, oh, it doesn't look right. It doesn't look so good. A little underexposed, but uh, not to fear. So this uh, autosave.tiff file is what we're interested in. Uh, but as well, this information here, so 1600 ISO, exposure time, 4 hours and 35 minutes, 55 frames. That's a solid amount of time. Uh, you could always use more to increase the signal-to-noise ratio, but uh, 
four and a half hours, I'll take it. So now we're going to uh, open this file in Photoshop, which is right here. And I actually think it looks kind of cool with the uh, the red hue that it creates. This is this is um, this is straight out of Deep Sky Stacker, uh, unprocessed, and you can see it's pretty smooth. It's actually it's really nice. And uh, so this is the kind of thing that uh, an HA filter. These are the kind of images you can expect to see. And I'm in heavy heavy light pollution. So uh, just to see the softness and the small, tiny stars and the sharp nebulosity is just, uh, man, that's beautiful. So first things first, I'm going to do what I always do and uh, crop the image here, kind of similar to what the intersection mode would do on uh, Deep Sky Stacker. I prefer to do it manually. And uh, if I just inspect my edges here. Yeah, I'm just going to go in a little more on the top. I have uh, the Bubble Nebula relatively centered in this frame. Uh, NGC 7635, and I believe that's M52 right here, the star cluster. And uh, actually, kind of a cool fact is uh, I'm recording this in my garage right now, and it's uh, October 3rd, and I'm recording... I'm taking RGB light frames on the bubble, bubble nebula right now uh, so I can combine the two into an HA RGB composite image. So that's pretty exciting. So let's just go over some of my processing steps here. Let's take a look at the levels. So yeah, that's, that's pretty typical of an HA um, histogram all the way jammed to the left like that. Uh, let's see what that red channel looks like. Yeah, a little bit more on the red channel, so we'll get into that in a minute. So I'm going to go ahead and convert this 32-bit image into a 16, and we want to choose Exposure and Gamma. I'm using Adobe Photoshop CC. Okay, so we're uh, going to make a curves adjustment. First things first. So it's going to be pretty typical of uh, standard curves, initial curves adjustment for an astrophotography image. And you can see it's bringing out that nebulosity just beautifully. Wow, look at all the extra, the, uh, the stuff over here. And like that's some, like you would never, I would never normally be able to pick that kind of stuff out uh, through a noise polluted area. Noise, light polluted area like like I'm shooting in, but uh, again, anyway, I'm just loving this uh, hydrogen alpha stuff. So we're gonna go back to that. Okay, so this is uh, this is where it gets interesting. So if you go into channels here in Photoshop, and we look at the RGB which we're on. And if you look at the green, there's hardly anything, any data there at all. If you look at the blue, same thing. It's the red that has all the information. And I believe that it's just the red channel uh, that has the information we're interested in. So it does turn grayscale like this, um, but that's okay because this is the actual light pixel data that, that we want. Um, so that's why when you see um, HA images, they're usually in black and white because it's just that red channel. And this is the channel that will be used as a luminance layer that will combine with our color data to create that vibrant, high contrast, vivid um, depiction of, uh, of whatever object you're, you're doing. So now we're just on this red channel. And bear with me, this is the way I like to do this. I like to copy this channel open a new image now that I've copied it to my clipboard this is going to be of the exact same dimensions say new OK and paste this single um, channel as a layer and now I'm uh, going to process this I'll just merge that down I'm going to process this some pretty much um, exactly the way I would a regular astrophotography image so I can see a, a more 
familiar looking uh, levels here. I'm going to bring that in and what a difference that makes, right, the, as far as contrast. So unfortunately you can also see uh, some of the noise now and even with a you know, four and a half hour exposure uh, the noise is still there. Uh, I have a feeling it's also because it was such a hot night that I, both nights that I imaged this. So I think to get a smoother image, you know, another two hours would have really benefited me. But I'll take this, especially since this is being blended into um, the RGB images. So already it's looking a lot better. Um, and then we're just going to experiment with some of the um, Astronomy Tools action set. Nothing to do with color, of course, but um, we're going to do a local contrast en enhancement. As always, I like to look at the before and after in the histories. Definitely helped. Uh, might be a little strong, though, so I'm going to copy this. Let's copy this state, go back to before I did it paste it on top. So I've got my um, in, increased contrast increased contrast frame on top of the original and I'm going to bring that down to about 35 percent. A little more subtle. I like the way this is looking though. And I'm going to combine these images. And merge layers. And then we're going to do the um, enhanced DSO and reduce stars, which is uh, takes a little bit longer. So let's run this. Okay, so the enhanced DSO and reduce stars action has run its course, uh, and it's done a great job at improving this image. Uh, I'm pretty close to uh, done here. Uh, I might just take a look at levels and curves one last time. Just a slight adjustment. Now I don't want to run a noise reduction filter on this because like I said this is being combined with uh, more data uh, and that will help reduce the uh, overall pixelated noise you see here. Plus um, in the end I'd like to add some more time to this. Uh, I just want to basically preserve all the sharpness to this uh, layer as I can. So I hope that helped. Uh, anyone new to capturing and stacking uh, hydrogen alpha frames with their DSLR. And uh, if you like this tutorial, please subscribe to this page. And um, all the best in the future.